Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Khyati from Vaidehi Cancer Center and today we are here to discuss about rectal cancers. Rectal cancers are becoming more and more common in India, especially in towns and cities. Traditionally, they were treated with surgery. But over the last decade, we have found that a combination of radiation therapy, chemotherapy and surgery improves the outcomes and survival benefit in these patients. So today we have with us Dr. Deepta Narayanan, uh, Professor and Head of Radiation Oncology Vaidehi Cancer Center and Vaidehi Super Specialty Hospital Richmond Circle with us today. Uh, welcome Madam. Uh, can you tell us how common are rectal cancers at our center and uh, how are the trends changing over the years? Thanks Dr. Kathy. Yes, we are seeing more number of rectal cancer cases at our center. There are various reasons for this. We are seeing more and more urbanization. People's lifestyle is changing. People are obese because of sedentary lifestyle. One more contributing factor is consumption of red meat. So all these are actually leading to increased incidence of rectal cancers. Also at Vaidehi, we do get patients from neighboring states like Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu. We do get cases from far states also like West Bengal, Bihar, Assam. So yes, overall we do see large number of cases at our center. Okay, ma'am, and how do uh, oncologists at Vaidehi Cancer Center approach a patient with rectal cancer? So, before we uh, go to that, we need to understand what is a rectal cancer. So, rectum is the uh, part of the large intestine, last few inches of the large intestine. It is around 12 to 15 centimeters in length. And we divide this into three parts, upper part, middle part and lower portion. And this division is important because the treatment plan is based on the location of the tumor. So most of the ca rectal cancer patients, they present with a rectal bleeding and difficulty in passing stools. And in very advanced cases, they can present with the obstruction. Now coming to the, how do we plan a treatment? So before we plan, actually we need to prove that it is a cancer. For that, we do a biopsy. Then we need to stay the cancer. For that purpose, we need to do clinical examination, what is called digital rectal examination. And we have to do a MRI scanning, which is a standard in rectal cancer. Uh, staging. Once we do that and also additionally we do a blood test called carcinoembryonic antigen testing CA testing and this even helps us to monitor in the later period. So once we complete all the investigations then we divide into stage actually. We, we try to find out which stage the patient falls. So after that the most important thing is actually the discussion in the tumor board. That is very important. So tumor board comprises of all the three specialists, that is surgical oncologist, radiation oncologist, and medical oncologist. And it's very important that all three are present when the decision is made because absence of any of them can lead to a treatment error. So this is the most important part that we need to have a tumor board and we need to discuss each and every case in the tumor board. So once the decision is made, now at, in India, even at our center, majority of the patients present with stage two onwards, and all these patients are treated with upfront, upfront radiation and chemotherapy followed by surgery. But why upfront chemo radiation and why not upfront surgery? Yeah, so traditionally we were treating all these patients with the surgery alone and then later we found that that majority of these patients would come back with a recurrence or a disease used to come back at operated site or elsewhere distal, at distant sites like liver, lung, brain, bones, etc. So to address these issues, we started adding radiation therapy and chemotherapy. And definitely we have seen by adding these modalities, definitely the outcomes have changed. They are better, like the survival has improved, the local control has improved. Now the next question was whether to give this chemotherapy and radiation therapy after surgery and before surgery. Now we have the evidence, we have the trials which have shown that giving radiation and chemotherapy before surgery leads to better survival better control and the most important thing is the compliance. We have found that giving the chemo and radiation before actually the, the patients are able to complete their treatment well because in some of the patients when they take a chemo later after surgery sometimes there is some surgical complications so their treatment is delayed or then they have some other issues not able to complete. So that we don't see when we give it upfront. So that's the reason that is the standard treatment with the added benefits what I mentioned. So routinely now it's given before actually surgery. Radiation chemotherapy is given before surgery. And do patients tolerate this treatment uh, well? Are the outcomes good with giving new or tumor treatment? Yeah, so as I mentioned, definitely their tolerance is very good. We do see, see very minimal side effects. 
and majority, more than 90% of the patients are able to complete the treatment without any major side effect. Even the, uh, the, after doing the surgery, also the post-operative complications are also less. So overall, we see that the patients are tolerating this approach very well. And the response, what you asked also, is excellent. Actually, good number of patients, 20 to 25% of the patients, actually show complete response. So what do we mean by complete response? That means once the treatment is over and we assess the uh, response. So that is done by clinical examination and we do again imaging, whatever initially I mentioned, MRI. And these, if they show that there is no disease, so in a subgroup of patients, subset of a patients, yes, we can actually avoid surgery in them. So, and also there is a newer concept, what we call as the total neuroadjuvant therapy that what we have started following now, where we complete radiation therapy, complete uh, total uh, chemotherapy, and then we give a break of six to eight weeks and surgery is planned. And even with this, the response rates are still better actually. And that is what has been followed at our center also. Can you give us a little more details, ma'am, about this radiation uh, therapy that we plan? Yeah. So before, uh, when we decide to treat a patient with a radiation therapy at uh, Timabo, then the process is explained to the patient, we take a consent, and then it's important, there are two ways the radiation is delivered. One is called a short format, and the second one is a long format, and this decision is based on the location of the tumor. So in short format, we give a five settings of radiation, in long format, we give 28 settings of radiation. Now radiation is delivered five days in a week. So it normally for 28 sitting is take around five to six weeks of time. And then we actually, uh, uh, we do something called the CT simulation. So what does this means is actually, we acquire the CT images in the same as what we do it in the treatment machine room. So we are trying to simulate the treatment conditions when we are doing the CT. So when we acquire the images, then they are sent to our planning system where we actually draw the tumor, we draw the other structures, normal structures, and then we introduce the radiation, we, we calculate the dose, and after that we deliver the radiation treatment to the patient. So once the CT images are acquired, so everything we do it on the CT images, and that's why we call it on something like a virtual simulation, like we are not using the patient, but we are doing it on the images. And uh, what uh, newer techniques or advanced equipment is available now at Vaidehi Cancer Center for providing this line of management? Yeah, so we have the best equipments in the world available to we deliver a radiation therapy. So we have the linear accelerators. With the help of that, we deliver radiation therapy. Also, we have a software which allows us to fuse the images of MRI, diagnostic MRI, with our planning CT images because the MRI gives a better resolution. What we may say that actually we can delineate or we can locate the tumor accurately on the MRI. So we can take those images and fuse with our CT and draw it. In addition to that, what we use a conformal radiation therapy where actually we can shield the normal surrounding normal structures and we can reduce the dose to the small bowels and uh, bladder, etc. And also we do the periodic imaging, what is called as the IGRT or image guided radiation therapy. As I said, the treatment goes over a period of five weeks, so it's important for us to make it on a daily basis. Uh, we have to ensure that we are delivering the same treatment to the same treatment site. So we do have these facilities at Vaidehi, and I would say that they're the best in the world. Uh, thank you, ma'am, and uh, thank you for this detailed talk. Uh, so now we know that a combination of treatment of radiation chemotherapy in uh, addition to surgery and delivering this treatment prior to surgery has seen improval in survival benefits in patients with rectal cancer. So every uh, newly diagnosed rectal cancer patient should be aware of these new developments. Thank you. Thank you.